The Princess of Wales gives a keynote speech in London. Princess Madeline of Sweden attends a gala in Washington, D.C. And Queen Letizia of Spain chairs an event in Madrid. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. In Madrid, Her Majesty Queen Letizia Svein chaired an event organized by the Fundación Microfinanzas, BBVA, on innovation as a key to combating digital poverty at Palacio del Marquez de Salamanca. The theme of today's event was Technology to Close Gaps, Creating Without Limits. Per a press release, quote, In a world where digital transformation is a fact, a third of the world's population is still not connected, according to the latest data, from the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, the United Nations Specialized Technology Agency. Closing the digital divide to soften others that affect the most vulnerable people has become a global challenge. The Fundación Microfinanzas BBVA's commitment to digital transformation makes it possible to bring technology closer to 3 million entrepreneurs with few resources in five Latin American countries. Showing how the Fundación supports them to avoid the digital divide while reducing the economic and social divide is the objective of the event, end quote. During today's event, the Queen gave a speech stating, quote, In times when there is debate about artificial intelligence and big data analysis, there are millions of people for whom an application, geolocation, voice recognition, for example, can kickstart their way of life thanks to the granting of a small loan and thus they guarantee their survival and that of their children. I'm referring to decent housing, the necessary training, basic health services, end quote. After her speech, the Queen attended a panel discussion entitled Microfinance in the Digital Era. In Brussels, Their Majesties, Emeritus King Albert II and Emerita Queen Paula of the Belgians, accompanied by Her Imperial and Royal Highness, Princess Astrid of Belgium, Archduchess of Austria Est, and His Royal Highness Prince Laurent of Belgium attended a Te Deum at the Cathedral of St. Michael and St. Gadula on the occasion of King's Day. In the afternoon, the royal family attended a ceremony at the Palais de la Nation, organized by the Chamber of Representatives, the Senate, and the federal government on the occasion of King's Day. On Tuesday evening in Brussels, Their Majesties King Philippe and Queen Mathilde of the Belgians attended a gala concert performance by the Musique Royale de Guide on the occasion of the 10-year reign of His Majesty the King held at the Palais des Beaux-Arts. On Monday, His Royal Highness, Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg, accompanied by the Minister of the Economy, Mr. Franz Fayot, and a large economic delegation supervised by the Chamber of Commerce and Lux Innovation began their three-day economic mission to Lisbon, Portugal. During their mission, the hereditary Grand Duke and the minister attended the opening of the 2023 Web Summit Lisbon. According to the Kroll Grand Ducal, the tech event gathered more than 2,600 startups and 900 investors from around the world, including 10 Luxembourg startups. The hereditary Grand Duke also held a meeting with the President of the Republic of Portugal, Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa, at the Presidential Palace. Thereafter, the hereditary Grand Duke and the Minister attended the Future Societies Conference. Discussions focused on the role and impact, positive and negative, of certain technologies, such as artificial intelligence. The economic mission concluded with the hereditary Grand Duke and Minister Feo attending the inauguration of a mural entitled a Rainy Morning, by Luxembourg artist Mr. Alain Welter. On Tuesday, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg, accompanied by the Minister of Social Security, Mr. Claude Hagen, visited the completion of the second phase of the construction of the new Cité de la Sécurité Sociale Building in Luxembourg City. The new 70,500-square-meter building is scheduled to open in mid-2029. In Den Haag, 
His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands held an audience this morning with the chairman of the Senate faction of Form for Democracy, Mr. Johan Dessing, at the Palais House Tembosch. In the mid-morning, the king held an audience with the chairman of the Senate faction of SGP, Mr. Peter Schalk. Meanwhile, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands attended the presentation of the annual report State of the SME 2023 of the Dutch Committee for Entrepreneurship in Katwijk. In Oslo, the Norwegian Royal Court announced that His Royal Highness Crown Prince Haakon of Norway has agreed to stay on as the goodwill ambassador for the United Nations Development Program for the next two years. As a UNDP goodwill ambassador, the Crown Prince will continue to work to promote with the UN's sustainability goals, quote, with a particular commitment to sustainability goals, number one, poverty eradication, and number 14, life in the ocean, end quote. In Stockholm, His Majesty King Carl Gustav of Sweden held an audience this morning with a speaker of the National Assembly of Slovenia, Ms. Urska Supancic, at the Royal Palace. On Monday, Her Royal Highness Princess Madeline of Sweden and her husband, Mr. Christopher O'Neill, attended a gala dinner at the Embassy of Sweden in Washington, D.C. on the occasion of the 2023 Nobel Prize. In Copenhagen, the world's most popular man at the moment, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark, as a member of the Sports Name of the Year Judging Committee, announced the first five names out of 15 nominated Danish athletes or teams up for the Sports Name of the Year. Participating in this morning's judging meeting held at Frederik Slot at Amelienborg included the Danish Minister of Culture, Mr. Jacob Engelschmidt, two Sports Hall of Famers, the DIF's chairman of the board, Mr. Hans Natorp. The managing director of the DIF, Mr. Morten Hansen. Team Denmark's chairman of the board, Mr. Lars Karup. And the CEO and managing director of Team Denmark, Mr. Peter Fabren. The winner will be announced live during the Sport 2023 Awards Gala in Herning on Saturday, January 6th, 2024. The show will be broadcast live on DR1. Along with winning the prestigious award, the winner will receive 75,000 Danish crown. The first five up for sports name of the year are Victor Axelsson, badminton, Cecile Ludwig, road cycling, Nana Marald, dressage, the 4K team in track cycling, and Magnus Ditlev, triathlete. Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark attended the Royal Lifeguards Clock Parade held at the Lifeguards Barracks at Rosenborg Schlott. During today's event, Her Majesty the Queen presented the Queen's Clock, which is an honor bestowed on a Royal Lifeguard who was selected by the Guard Company as the, quote, best of the period of service at the end of his service, end quote, according to the Danish Royal Court. The Guard is appointed by his superiors and comrades, who, in the selection, emphasize both outstanding military service and camaraderie. The recipient of the 2023 Queen's Clock was Jonathan Anderson. Congratulations. Well done. Last Friday, His Royal Highness Duke Franz of Bavaria and his longtime partner, Mr. Thomas Greinwald, attended the 30th anniversary celebrations of the Bavarian Theatre Academy in Munich. Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales, delivered the keynote speech during the Shaping Us National Symposium at the Design Museum in London. According to a press release, the symposium gathered, quote, cross-disciplinary leaders, child and adult specialists, and global thinkers for the first time to consider how we grow, think, and behave throughout our life, to build resilience for the future. The Royal Foundation Center for Early Childhood has conducted a first-of-its-kind global listening exercise involving experts from 21 countries around the world 
to unite the thinking and agree on key foundational skills we lay in early childhood, but continue to grow beyond it that help establish happy, healthy adult lives. End quote. And finally, on the Fort Antoine Espelande in Monacoville, their Serene Highnesses Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco, Her Royal Highness Princess Caroline of Hanover, Her Serene Highness Princess Stephanie of Monaco, and Mr. Louis Ducroy attended a ceremony on the occasion of the, quote, return of service of two saluting cannons dating from 1881, end quote, according to the Palais Poncier. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday, November 16th with all the latest royal news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, again, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care. <laughs>